consider the region bounded by F, G, X equals A, and X equals B. You'll notice that there's empty region between the X axis and our function G. Now, what happens when we take this region and we revolve it about the X axis? What kind of a solid would this create? And more to the fact, what would the cross sections of this solid look like? Would they be circles? Would they be disks? Well, the answer is no, they actually wouldn't be circles. If we were to flip this region about the X axis, this is the image that we would get. And you'll notice that everywhere on the outside of this, we have this red region. But of course, there's this empty core in the center of this. In reality, we have a couple of circles to think about. There's the cross section that goes from the upper blue line down to the lower blue line. This is the outside uh, perimeter of this figure. And then there's the circle that occurs from the inside right here, the empty space inside. Now, if you were to look down the barrel of this image, what you'd notice is that there would be two circles. You would have your outer circle as well as an inner circle. And this red region would be everywhere in between these two circles. Now this is called a washer. It's sometimes used in home improvement to tighten a nut or a bolt. But here's our outside red region and our inside is empty just like this hole right here. So here is from the blue line to the blue line. That's the outer circle out here. And of course the inner circle is empty, which means that we have to find the area in between this outer circle and the inner circle. Well, that's actually not too hard to do because the area of our outer circle is a certain area and we'll have an area of our inner circle. And the goal here is to find the area of the outer circle minus the area of the inner circle. And that should give us this red region inside. That's our cross section right here. So if you were, for example, to cut a slice vertically through this solid, your cross section would look like this washer right here. So let's construct a couple of things here. Let's construct, for example, a larger radius. This is the radius of our larger circle from the x-axis to the further away function. And we'll call this big R. That's radius, big R radius for our big radius. And let's also create a smaller radius. This is from the axis of revolution to the closer function. This is your empty circle right here. This is our empty radius. So we'll call this little r because it's smaller. And of course the area of this cross section is given by the area of your larger circle pi big r squared minus the area of your smaller circle pi little r squared. And so the volume of this solid is the infinite sum from A to B of all of these infinitesimal washer cross sections. So we are finding the integral from A to B of the area of these cross sections, which is given by pi big R squared minus pi little r squared. And of course, since these cross sections are perpendicular to the x-axis, we're stacking them up along the x-axis. And so we're going to call this dx because we're taking the, the integral with respect to x. Of course, we can pull out a pi. And our formal formula is pi times the integral from a to b of big R squared minus little r squared dx.
And of course, if we were rotating about the y-axis, everything would be the exact same. Consider the region bounded by f, g, y equals a, and y equals b in here. If you were to rotate this region about the y-axis, we can create this solid whose cross-sections would look somewhat like this. Now because there is empty space between your axis of revolution and your actual region, we're going to have to use washer rule. Now keep in mind here that our larger radii extends from the blue line to the blue. This is our big R here, and big R goes from the y-axis to f. Meanwhile, our little r goes from g to g right here. And so this right here would be the empty space inside. Boom, that's our little r. So here, we are taking the integral from y equals a to y equals b of our larger circle, which is pi big R squared. Of course, this big R is in terms of y because it's the distance from the y-axis to our function f, which will also be a function of y, minus pi little r squared, which is also a function of y, because a horizontal distance here, with respect to y, dy. And of course, we can pull out the pi all over again. So this is pi times the integral from a to b of your big radius squared minus your little radius squared dy, where your big radius is the distance from your axis of revolution to the edge of your region on the far side. And little r is the distance from your axis of revolution to the beginning of your region, the closest part of your region. And this is what happens when we revolve a washer about the y-axis.